Welcome back to Master Your Ash. I'm your host, Michael Prisdale, and today I will be smoking the Monte Cristo, and this is the Dantes Limited Edition 2016. This is a really pretty dark chocolate wrapper. This is the Hermosa One format. Hermosa, meaning beautiful in Spanish, is a traditional kind of Cuban cigar shape and size. It was normally utilized to describe a double Corona before the Winston Churchill, Churchill edition format kind of became the standard amongst the double Corona kind of format. We kind of, uh, and I'll just provide a little update here on the burn. We straightened out and corrected that little tiny kind of crack on the wrapper that we had. And I really didn't get into too much of the details, but I purchased these in a box of 10 as that's how they come. And I bought these in 2019 on my trip returning home from the duty free store inside of the London airport. So I was at Heathrow and I was looking through the duty free. I find a box of these Monte Cristo EL 2016s and they were like, I think the MSRP on them was about $25 a stick. Most Cuban cigars, if not all of them, have dramatically increased in price because now with the way that the world is, huge supply chain issues, supply and demand. Uh, these now go for, on the secondary market, about $89 a stick. So that's $890 for these cigars on the secondary market currently. And uh, I was one of those people that bought a Bahiki, that bought a set of 10 Bahikis uh, when they first came out by Cohiba. And they were like $40 a stick, $50 a stick. We know how expensive those are. If you can find a single stick, most of the time they're charging you upwards of 150, almost $200 a cigar nowadays. So, <laughs> Um, that is that is the cool thing about Cuban cigars is that they can be a wise investment. First third on this particular cigar, nice pickup in spice and intensity. Not part of Serie D number four cinnamon black pepper, but definitely a little uptick. Um, Retro hail is quite comfortable, not stinging on the nostrils or on the palate. That chocolate kind of cookie dough flavor that I mentioned on the cold draw and on the initial pre-light, that's remained like pretty much the steadfast component is chocolate, chocolate chip cookie dough. Um, maybe a little slight creaminess moving through this second third, fighting all the noise from my neighbors, <laughs> which is fun. Um, so far, so good. Second third introduced a lot more creamy kind of nutty components to it that chestnut walnut kind of matured into almost like a peanut butter kind of flavor, which is really nice and which is really nice. And the cigar just kind of smoothened out. I was reading through my copy of the PG, the gourmet guide to cigars. And you know, this book has a lot of outdated information to it, which is fine because it's very interesting to me to see a cigar connoisseur, somebody who created his own line of cigars, somebody who was so devout two cigar pairings specifically. But one of the things that I love the most about it, besides the fact that he talks about pairing certain cigars to certain white and red wines, depending upon what style of cigar and how full the body is of the cigar. One of the things that I love about it is that he talks about a fourth fermentation, specifically to Habanos. Habanos Poros from Cuba like this. Cuban cigars, they are, at least in his time, like 1990 to 95, they are deemed the finest cigars in the world with very, very few competitors from other countries. Now, one of the things that he states is that certain cigars from Cuba should be smoked within the first year upon receiving them, and other ones you should wait until well past a year, depending upon if they've hit that fourth fermentation because there is a sick period that occurs when a cigar is naturally fermenting in the box that it has been sealed in and sent away in. When the tobacco is being harvested, you have the first fermentation that takes place as it's being dried, moisture is being reduced, and sugars and starches and certain things inside of the plant, maybe not starches so much, but sugars are being consumed to allow fermentation under the heat. 
and that second fermentation is where you're gathering all of those dark kind of wrapper notes and additional kind of uh, changes to the wrapper leaf, the binder, and the filler, making them a nice Colorado Claro. Third fermentations, you get into your Oscuros, you get into really, really fine cured ones, and those are typically done in the pilones or in the aging rooms after the cigars are already kind of getting rolled and being allowed to rest for a little while. The fourth fermentation that he speaks of is something along the lines of the cigars are already rolled, right? They're already in their bundles, and then they go to get boxed so that they can be sold and shipped. Once they're in their box, that cedar box allows for all of those cigars in that box to typically interact with each other. And that's why sometimes you'll get a box of Cubans that actually have different colorations as you move through. That's just really cool and neat. And I thought that was an interesting fun fact that I read in his book that I should share. I don't know how many people agree with a fourth fermentation. Um, I would love to get some comments below. This cigar has mellowed out rather nicely. That cookie dough ice cream kind of note has matured into a nice peanut buttery kind of note. And overall, the spice level has been very, very tame and mild. Now, do I believe that this is an $89 cigar? Probably not. <laughs> do I think that it's every bit worth $25, $30, which is the original MSRP range that it was at? Yes, absolutely. So far, so good. Worth every bit of $30, in my opinion. $25, $30 price range, it's fantastic. As far as pairings that I would recommend with this stick. So, we kept the peanut flavor, very, very light spice, nothing too crazy in that regard. Um, that cookie dough, that cookie dough ice cream that has been so delicious, it kind of took a back seat to a little bit of salinity and morphed into a potato chip kind of note, which as you know, if you've watched a few of my reviews that have had that kind of potato chip note along with the peanut, those are flavors that are right in my wheelhouse. The kind of specific way that bourbon as a characteristic just really blends well with peanut flavors. I think that, you know, if you did Boulevardier, if you did uh, whiskey sour with bourbon, if you did all different types of drinks or just had bourbon neater on the rocks with this old fashioned variations even, you would, you would knock it out of the park. So, although I think that scotch would work, I think that the honey heather kind of notes for the maybe the, the end would be best or maybe like the second third where the flavors of the cigar kind of tame themselves down for about a good 20 minutes. But I would start honestly with bourbon. I would enjoy bourbon either neat on the rocks or in a drink. I would probably go move into a scotch towards the second third once the flavors kind of, you know, just eased up a bit and then I would finish strong with another bourbon whiskey. But those are my pairings and for my palate what I think would work best. Obviously, a cigar with this kind of flavor profile, you can, you know, you have the wide, the full range of items that you can utilize with it, but I just think those would probably pair the best. Thank you so much for watching. Please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe below as that helps grow the channel. I thank you so much for joining me and I will see you again for another cigar review.